Okay, we're going to examine a couple of aerials today. Um, both of these are um, 26 meg pre-tuned antennas. Uh, both are made by GME in Australia. This particular antenna is an AE220N. As you can see from the label, it's 26 megahertz. It's ground independent and it comes complete with a 5.5 meter lead and base and it's colored black. So this is a ground independent antenna. It does not require a ground plane. Now this antenna is in um, approximately the $150 price bracket. This is the other antenna we're going to have a look at. Now this is uh, again it's made by GME. It's Australian made. It's a 26 megahertz uh, ground dependent antenna. It's uh, 0.6 of a meter high. Uh, it's, a, it's a whip. It's obviously a quarter wave uh, and it's black. And part number is AE2400N. Now this antenna will require a ground plane because it quite clearly says it's ground dependent on the um, packet. So what we're going to do now is um, have a look at how we can deploy this antenna on a vehicle. Let's take a closer look at this antenna. So this is our AE2400N 26 megahertz ground dependent antenna. So we know that it's got to be mounted on a ground plane or a counterpoise. And we know that this ground plane and counterpoise needs to be both reflective and conductive for it to work properly. So, and we also know that the size of this ground plane, as a rough rule of thumb, needs to be the radius of the antenna. So right at the moment I'm actually waving this antenna over the top of the bonnet of my four wheel drive. So this would be an appropriate place to mount it. At least it's got an adequate ground plane here. Um, <laughs> most people however don't like the idea of a, an aerial mounted in the middle of their bonnet. Um, you could in theory if you had a, a motor vehicle with a reasonably sized boot or trunk um, get a ground plane uh, from the boot or trunk by mounting an antenna in the middle of the trunk. That would be appropriate. On my vehicle, the single best place to put an antenna of this type is on the roof. And we'll just have a quick look at the roof. As you can see, we've already got an antenna mounted on my roof. Um, but here would be an appropriate place. We've got a plentiful surface, uh, ground plane, counterpoise. We've got enough metal here to provide an adequate ground plane. So that would also be a good place. Now in a couple of places on my vehicle that I would consider to be inadequate um, is situations like this. I see plenty of these. Um, if you had a, uh, a bonnet bracket very similar to that with an antenna mounted here. Well, there's a problem with this antenna mounted here. Over here we get an adequate ground plane. But out here we've got fresh air. So out here we have no counterpoise and uh, fresh air is neither reflective nor conductive so this wouldn't be adequate. Um, on the side of a boot also wouldn't be adequate. Now the other location I see these aerials uh, quite commonly is mounted on the side of a vehicle with Z brackets. So if you did this kind of thing with a Z bracket and an aerial mounted above it You've got the same issue. You've got an adequate ground plane over the over the top here, over the roof, but out here we've got fresh air. So that's not adequate for this style of antenna. Now, this antenna being in the forty to fifty dollar bracket is very popular, uh, but most people don't actually understand when they read the label that the antenna is ground dependent. They don't actually understand what a counterpoise actually is. Anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to have a, a look at a ground independent antenna. Um, and uh, we will 
do the same thing on the vehicle for this ground independent antenna. So this is our uh, GME AE220N ground independent antenna. Um, now this antenna does not require a ground plane or counterpoise. Um, it is actually designed to be mounted in this kind of location. So we've got our typical bonnet bracket here. This could be just to one side of the bonnet. It might be to one side of the boot or trunk. And this antenna can be mounted here quite successfully. It does not require a ground plane or counterpoise. And this is what it's designed for. If you had a mirror bracket on a truck, um, that would also be a typical installation for this antenna. Um, you can mount it on the side of your vehicle. So a Z bracket installation like this, somewhere on the side of your vehicle and then mount the antenna above that. Uh, that would also be satisfactory. Um, there's a disadvantage to this antenna. If we look closely at the bottom of the antenna, you will see it's got a, um, a nut mounting arrangement here. And you will notice that it doesn't actually have a seal. There's no weatherproof seal here. So I would not advise to mount an antenna like this through a metal surface, such as the roof of your vehicle. And the reason for that, of course, is it will leak. Um, so I guess it comes back to horses for courses and using antennas the way they were designed to be used. But perfectly adequate antenna where you don't have enough ground plane or if you don't have a ground plane at all. Now um, this antenna and the previous one I showed you um, they're pre-tuned for 26 megahertz. So there's no requirement to actually trim them. Now I forgot to mention that this uh, this antenna um, it's our AE220N antenna from GME um, it's in the $150 bracket um, so it's substantially more expensive than the standard ground dependent quarter wave antenna. Now the other thing to note about this antenna is the upper portion of this antenna if you break it um, it's a specific part in its own right. Um, it has a, a different thread here um, and you cannot simply um, go and grab a ground dependent antenna, this, uh, the other one we looked at, and screw it onto here. The, um, the upper whip section of this antenna is a specific part. You'll have to order the the specific part specifically for this antenna. Now the other thing I forgot to mention is if you're um, if you're four wheel driving and you've got a set of bull bars, uh, bearing in mind that uh, um, bull bars, you know, they're not not providing a ground plane. This would be uh, an ideal antenna to mount on a bull bar as well. Now. Uh, if you're having trouble with the range of your CB, uh, this would be the very first place I would start. Um, I would begin by um, asking myself, have I got the right antenna mounted in the correct location? Um, it's very, very common for me to encounter ground dependent antennas like this one in my left hand here mounted um, on the corners of mudguards like this on uh, bull bars and on mirror brackets uh, and in all of those and, and on the sides of vehicles as well on Z brackets uh, and in all of those locations you do not have an adequate ground plane uh, and it doesn't surprise me when people um, tell me that they've got very poor range on their CB uh, the reason why this kind of thing happens is, of course, this is a, an aerial which is purchased in the $40 to $50 price range. Um, and people try to deploy them um, in inadequate locations where there isn't an adequate ground plane. 
Uh, now another location where there isn't an adequate location, uh, an, an, oh, sorry, another location where there isn't an adequate ground plane uh, are vehicles with um, that are constructed largely of fiberglass. So uh, trucks where the cabs are manufactured of fiberglass, um, camper vans and the like, um, uh, where you've got a fiberglass cab, uh, of course the surface is neither radio reflective nor conductive. So in those locations and also the locations where you don't have an adequate ground plane like mirror brackets and uh, mudguard mounts, that type of thing, uh, bull bars, you really should be looking at a ground independent antenna such as this. Anyway, I hope that helps uh, a lot of people with their uh, CB range problems.